this place was what really instantiated the whole trajectory of the study. The church is Chiesa di Sant'Anacetto in Palazzo Altems. And if you notice, there are angels on the side that have a scroll of music that is only one vocal line. And yet if you look at the singers, it looks as if they're singing multiple things at once and the lute player is playing multiple notes at once. We realize that it's a three-part canon and they play with each other, they harmonize each other. I'm willing to bet that Duke Altemps wrote that canon and that it's his own little musical signature into the space. Duke Altemps designed his chapel with music in mind, and he composed music to sound perfect in the space. Professor Jonathan Berger is leading a study of the acoustic qualities of sacred spaces around the world. He and his team are creating 3D models of unique interiors, then recreating the acoustics of those spaces in order to study their effects on human perception. I'm trying to understand what we've termed an acoustic signature of an architectural space. The unfathomable is this sense of transcendence that is often evoked in churches, and I'm convinced that sound and the architectural acoustics of a space has a good deal to do with that. It's all about how a sound reflects across surfaces, how it's then dissipated. So flat roofs have a more conservative distribution and dispersion of sound. Arched roofs add a level of complexity because you can just imagine you know, the sound bouncing around in different ways and bouncing back. Domes have a unique type of complexity. And so the larger the volume and the more complex the geometry, the longer the decay time will be. If I were to clap my hand, right, you can count the number of seconds that it takes for that clap to go. The sound dissipates in a fairly short amount of time, which suggests that music that might have been written specifically for this space can do certain things that won't work in other churches. The first grant was to explore this concept of what I call the aesthetics of the sublime. This second grant continues to do that in a different way, particularly reaching out beyond Eurocentric sort of Western canon and looking at the same issue in multiple cultures. A curious thing happened. While we began working on the second phase of the grant, an Egyptologist from Harvard contacted us and said, I'm interested in trying to recreate the sound that might have been in an ancient Egyptian tomb. I have a a PhD student who's, who's doing the acoustics of domes, particularly in Isfahan, Iran, and a uh, remarkable PhD student who's a spelunker, and she's one of the few people who's allowed into the uh, caves of Chauvet in France, and she's done these acoustic models of that. So we isolate particular spaces we feel have both cultural significance and, and this particularly interesting acoustical signature. And then we do a computational model of the acoustics of those spaces. And then we have a technology where we can bring subjects into an acoustic reproduction of those spaces. The trick is using microphones, we cancel the feedback so that we're able to impose the acoustics of the space in the room so that when someone comes into the space, they literally feel as if they're in that acoustic space. Nothing at all to me is ever obvious. I'm a composer and everything I do in terms of asking these questions has to do somehow with my composition. So I ask questions that I try to answer in compositions and I find a problem in compositions that I try to answer in research. 